Hello everyone, welcome to Squirt Shirt Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Yamato's 160 scale VF-19 toys. Now in high definition, now featuring each variant. These toys originally MSRP'd for 2200 yen. Yamato got the ball rolling in May 2011 with the VF-19 Kai Fire Valkyrie. Later that year, they gave us the VF-19S in November. They made us wait till August 2012 for the VF-19F. And they ended the series in December 2012 with the VF-19P. All of these toys were available at a steep discount at some point except for the VF-19P as the news that Yamato was shuttering its business created a sort of run on the 19P so it's now a little difficult to find even at MSRP. These toys came with two display stand adapters, an optional shield for Batroid mode, there's a lot of uh, anime magic that goes into the transformation of these toys in Macross 7. That shield helps capture that magic. There's also three optional gap filling pieces. I'll show you one of those in a minute on the 19S toy. There's also guns with each of these toys. The 19S, F, and P feature the same gun. The Fire Valkyrie has a special gun that actually fired speakers essentially. Uh, if you haven't seen Macross 7, it's a bit of a trip. Uh, the 19 Kai toy comes with an optional face. It's a little less cartoony. The VF-19P toy comes with speaker pylons that mount on the shoulder. All right, I mentioned that there was a gap filling piece, uh, that there were several gap filling pieces, one of which is less optional than the others in my opinion. As you can see, there is a black spot in the back of a very sleek looking fighter mode. That black spot gets filled by this piece here, like so. And now it looks much, much better. While I've got this toy in my hand, let me show off the landing gear bays. All of these are painted in white inside. It's a nice touch. And I'll show you some gimmicks with the landing gears in a moment here. On the 19P toy, let's look at the landing gear first. There's a little slot where you can fit a fingernail in to pry it open. And then the hinge actually comes outward and then swings open like so. On the 19P, you can see it's actually painted teal on the inside, which is a little different. And the landing gears themselves are painted gray. There's a little hook on them so you can fish out the landing gear. And then you pull it outward. And once it's all the way out, you can attach this arm to a little shelf. And so the landing gear pivots outward and locks into place. So that's all really nice. So now while I have this toy out, point out a couple of changes in the mold. The Fire Valkyrie and the 19P uh, essentially the same toy with the exception of these vertical stabilizers on the legs and this hole in the shoulder where the speaker pylons go. The 19 F and S toys are again essentially the same, except for the white trim and the heads, obviously. Now between the Fire Valkyrie and the Blazer Valkyrie, there is a different shield. There are guns up here in the front, and obviously there are different wings, which starts all the way up at this root here, and then goes outward. So. Those are your primary differences. In fighter mode, you do have an opening canopy. You have to pull it upward, and then you can swing it back. And then there's the pilot figure. And that pretty much does it for fighter mode. You can, I just messed this up by touching the gun underneath. You can attach the gun in fighter mode on both of these toys. It fits securely and it can be pointed perfectly straight. 
All right, let's move on to gear walk mode. All right, here we have gear walk mode. It's going to be pretty unwieldy for me to try to keep all four of these gear walks on screen at the same time. So I'm going to select one and go over an individual aspect of the toy in gear walk mode with each model. We'll begin with the 19P and we will show you something I could have mentioned in fighter mode really. The intake covers are non-removable. They are fixed in place. I was told that Yamato wanted to make them removable at first, but in the design pro process they determined that they'd have to limit articulation in Batroid mode a little bit if they went that route, and so they elected not to. But here is the 19P in Gearwalk mode. Alright, so here we have the Fire Valkyrie. And just take a moment to look at the guns that these toys came with. The Fire Valkyrie has a unique gun. It has a removable ammunition magazine. It has the ability for the grip to slide forward and back. It's back in fighter mode, forward in Batroid and Gearwalk modes. And it has this little removable fin, or not removable fin, little articulated fin that you pull down for Batroid and Gearwalk modes. The 19P FNS toys come with a different gun. It has a removable magazine as well. Although, again, I'm not really sure how often you'd use any of that. And also, this part of the gun collapses for use in fighter mode. Now, onto the Gearwalk toy itself. One of the things that kind of bothers me about fighter and Gearwalk modes is how easily these parts get jostled. It's not a huge deal at all, it's pretty minor. Uh, but it is something you'll notice that you have to adjust every now and then. Uh, bigger deal comes to the feet and the angle in which you can get the legs in gear walk mode. But I will address that with the 19S toy. Okay, let's get a little bit of complaining out of the way before we give this toy some more praise. The feet, you may have noticed, I have in a sort of awkward position. Uh, this is a really easy cheat to get gear walk mode to work for you. If you, what you can do is there's a little part inside of the foot that rotates left and right, or pivots left and right. If you bring it all the way to the left, when you go to close the foot, the outside of the foot will catch on the ankle guard and not be able to move past that. And this lets you put the toy down and bear all of the toy's weight on that outside foot part which allows the toy to actually stand. If you don't do that, and you leave the feet in the middle, and you splay them out correctly, the angle of the toy will either put the nose very near to the ground, if not on it entirely, or you'll want to put all the weight towards the back of the toy, and eventually you can loosen up the ankles really badly and make them so they don't work that well. So I highly recommend just pivot the foot to the outside, bring the toe down a little bit, and that gives you sort of a mock angle that's locked in place. And the toy will stand up pretty nicely, pretty dynamically, and actually makes 19's gear walk mode pretty useful. Even though the gear walk mode, I would say, is still the low point of this toy, and really the design. Uh, the VF-19 has one of the poorest gear walk designs in my estimation. All right, this next part's a little hard for me to demonstrate. Uh, definitely check out my transformation guide. Uh, but what I'd like to show is how well connected the gear walk toy is. It is very solid and in a way that I don't think many other VF or YF-19 toys have been able to do. You can actually lift this toy up by the chest section. And you can do this because there are pegs on the wings that are attaching to the chest. So check out my transformation guide to see those pegs a little more closely. I'll try to give you a quick glimpse here. You just push these wings out a little bit. And then this whole chest section now would be free, which is very similar to what you see on Yamato's YF-19 toy is that this chest section just kind of rests there um, but on this toy you've got these pegs here 
that fit into that slot there. It really makes things nice and tight. And it's a really good display piece and a very good toy in this mode if it weren't for how tricky the feet can get. So before we move on to Batroid mode, I did just want to take a second to point out that these toys do work without using my ankle cheat that I showed you earlier. Um, generally, I need to stand them up a little bit taller, not quite as aggressive a pose. And you're going to have to pull your ankles down all the way as far as they'll go. And you'll want to get them into just the right position uh, so that you can have the toy standing like so. A lot of early users, myself included, broke their gear walk joint here because they tried to get the leg to angle further forward at that point. It doesn't go any further than that amount right there. You'll see three little clicks. And so overall, gear walk mode without using my ankle cheat, it just takes a little bit more patience, but you can get there. And generally, uh, you know, I've seen some people get a little bit more aggressive pose than these. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of effort on your part. We're going to begin our discussion of Batroid with a little close-up on the VF-19 Fire Valkyrie. I mentioned earlier that it came with an optional face that's a little bit less clowny. Here's how you go about installing it. You move the fin back on the head, you lift up on the visor. That'll get you to this point, then you kind of pick his nose, and then you pop off his face. Hopefully it doesn't get lost on you. And then you just have a little peg on here. Install the new face that has the mouth cover closed. Put the visor back on. And get the fin back into place. And there you go. So a slightly less clowny Fire Valkyrie now. Uh, and while we have the close-up, let's talk about a gimmick that is only on the Fire Valkyrie, and that is the shoulder speakers. So if you just pry open towards the base, you will reveal interior speakers. Now these are only a gimmick for the Fire Valkyrie, because only the Fire Valkyrie had these speakers in Macross 7. On the other toys, you'll note there is no pin at the edge of the shoulder. So you should not try to pry open the shoulders. You would see the speaker gimmick unpainted, but again, there's no pin, there's no hinge, and you should not be doing that, and hopefully you don't accidentally do that. All right, let's continue with the close-ups with a look at the VF-19P. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the head on this toy actually has an inverse VF-19 Kai face behind the green plastic. Uh, that's because there's a bit of a magical scene in one of the Macross 7 movies where this Valk gets covered in blood and then looks just like a VF-19 Fire Valkyrie. It kind of seems to become a VF-19 Fire, Fire Valkyrie. Um, and so Yamato, I guess, did their best to give us a reason for why that would be. Um, another cool gimmick, this one is universal to all of the toys here. They all feature a trap door that swings open, revealing another trap door that swings open, revealing the pilot figure. This is cool, especially for the VF-19P and Kai, because Basara was really fond of climbing out of his Batroid toy, out of that little hatch. So it's neat that Yamato incorporated that another gimmick that is available on all of these vf19 toys there's a door here that swings open and then there are little missiles that you pull forward and rotate a little easier with two hands once they're forward like so you can close the door and it looks like they're poking out from the side. That is another common effect from Macross 7. All right, now it's time for a slightly less extreme close-up. I mentioned earlier there were gap filling pieces. The 19F toy here has the gap fillers installed. The 19S does not. Uh, I would never use these gap fillers if I wasn't doing this review. They are easy enough to install. I just don't have my toys facing away from me enough for it to matter. There's just one peg that goes into one little hole. 
And there you have it. All right, one last bit of close-up. Here you can see the standard shield on the VF-19S toy. On the VF-19F toy, it's the Batroid-specific shield. It's tapered more towards the front, and it fits more in the middle of the arm. But that's about it. So if that really matters to you, this is definitely more Lion Art accurate for Batroid mode. Uh, but I don't think the 19S's shield looks all that terrible. All right, let's talk articulation. And like everything else in Batroid mode, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, Yamato focused on Batroid mode, and I think it really shows. We'll start with the head. You got left. You got right. You got articulated lasers. And you've got up and down, but it's not a ball joint. You can't rock it left or right. And let's move to the shoulder. You can go all, you can rotate it. It's very stiff all the way around. Like so. And you then have a pivot right below the shoulder. You have a normal elbow. And then you can slide this bicep shield up to reveal a second pivot for the elbow. And bring the arm all the way up like so. There's a rotation point there as well. And you have rotating wrists like you've expected from all of Yamada's toys for quite a while now. There is no waist. Obviously the wings are articulated. You can get them out of your way. The legs pivot in and out and back and forth all the way forward, all the way back. Uh, now because of this, this left and right, that's why you didn't get the removable intake shields because there's uh, apparently a screw there that the leg is pivoting on. You have your gear walk joint, which I mentioned earlier I'm not thrilled with. I think it's a little limited. Very, very stiff. You have a knee with a great range of motion. Super nice, clicky, everything about this toy. You have ankles. The ankles are, for the most part, fantastic. You have huge range of motion. You have a left-right pivot up above the ball joint. And then you have a ball joint. Now the ball joint does have one weakness. It doesn't do heel up very well. Not really sure why, but that again is part of those problems with gear walk mode, where you need to watch out what you're doing because you don't want to try to push this heel upward. Fortunately, that's not something you normally would do, and you can have a ton of fun posing this toy in Batroid mode. All right, now for some parting thoughts. Uh, one thing I really liked about these toys is that this back piece is all metal, all painted, and gives you some nice heft for a toy that's this expensive. There's a little bit of metal throughout some joints also, uh, but it's surprising that a huge piece like this would all be painted metal. Uh, one durability issue I've seen a few people discuss, um, and I have encountered it on my 19F, is that this crotch piece is rather loose. Um, not a huge deal. You can usually get it just how you want it and with a little finagling get it to keep. Uh, but it is a little bit annoying for something this expensive to have something like that going on. Um, now what you're not seeing a lot of is people complaining that the joints over time have gotten loose like you are with Bandai's DX toys. Uh, one thing to watch out for also, the wings are extremely sharp and there's some sharp edges too so you might poke yourself every now and then. Uh, some people have even drawn blood so uh, very crisp molds and definitely some potential there for hurting yourself. Now, recently someone said that the these toys are the best Yamato Macross toy ever made, and quite possibly the best Macross toy ever made. And honestly, I don't know that I can really dispute that. Uh, I can think of some other great Macross toys, but I'm not sure I can think of any that are really better than these ones. The uh, fit and finish is superb. The articulation is superb. Uh, there's one weak mode in gear walk, and even that has some workarounds to be pretty decent, and it does hold together well in that mode. So, uh, highly recommend these toys. Uh, used to say if you can get them on uh, sale, good for you. Uh, they still are on sale some places, but with Yamato no longer in business, 
Uh, they're probably going to vanish, although the Macross 7 license is probably an easy one for a follow-up company to acquire. Anyways, highly recommended. Visit anymoon.com for the full review.